supplement um, that that had something in it, um, and I I did not check with the medical staff um, before taking it. Um, I, I um I really hope that um that people can learn from learn from this, learn from my mistake. And I'm really I'm really sorry to to everyone. I'm just really sorry. That was Florida, uh, excuse me, Florida starting quarterback Will Greer suspended for one year after testing positive for a performance enhancing drug. And as you just heard, he said he took an over the counter supplement. Skip, what's your reaction to that apology? Stephen A., my reaction is I have a problem with it. And I realize Will Greer is a young man, he's a student athlete. But let's be clear about this and honest about it. He's also part of the billion dollar business, the highly publicized business that is college football. And if he's, as he says, I really hope that people can learn from this. If that's what you think, Will, then you need to come completely clean here. You need to give us details. You can't skirt this issue. You gotta lay it on the line because being as vague as, as you were in your explanation, in my mind, just creates more doubt. He did say, as Molly points out, that he took an over-the-counter supplement that had something in it. Some news outlets reported that something was this. We, we reported here at ESPN, that's not it. So I have no idea what it was. I don't know, Stephen A., but I would like to know. And I believe if, if Will Greer really wants us to learn from this, he should come clean with the details of, I went to GNC and bought this product which had this in it, or I went to Vitamin Shop and bought this product that had this in it, or I went to my neighborhood supplement store and I bought this product that they sell over the counter, and mistakenly, I, I didn't clear it with my medical people at the University of Florida, it had this in it. Do you know how many times I've heard this explanation, which has often been an excuse? This is getting age old now. I've heard it way back to Jim Miller when he was with the Chicago Bears back in the late 90s. It's, it's becoming an age old dodge in all of sports, and I consider this partially professional sports. Just come clean, just say this is what I did, because now I have to wonder, because Will Greer came to Florida a year ago at about 177 pounds, reportedly. Will Greer now, by by their program that they give out at Florida weighs around 200 pounds. Well, that could be just natural growth. I don't know what he did. I, I mean, he's just, he's maturing into a man. I, I get all that. I'm sure he's attacked the weight room. Love all that. There are some supplements you can take, and there are obviously some things to level the playing field you just can't resort to. And now I don't know exactly what he used, and I don't see why he couldn't say, you know what, I used this and, and I screwed up because I should have checked about that one little substance that was just part of this supplement. It does happen. It, co it could have happened. Just come clean and tell us exactly how it happened so you don't leave us with more doubts. I echo your feelings in terms of the details, what you require, which you think he should be more open about it. But I don't have the problem with him that you have. And the reason why I don't have the problem with him that you have is because you consider this partially professional sports. I certainly will refute that adamantly and emphatically when it comes to the athletes themselves. It's anything but professional sports because these brothers need to be paid some stipend or whatever, and that is not happening. Having said all of that, that's not the issue. The issue clearly here is deception because why wouldn't you go to the medical staff at Florida and let them know what the deal is? He made a mistake. My problem is, Skip, is that it doesn't negate the fact that I think the NCAA is incredibly excessive with this penalty because in the NFL, we just saw Antonio Gates come back. We saw Martavis Bryant come back. Mm -hmm. Four-game suspension. Yep. Sheldon Richardson with the marijuana yep. and the weed and all of this other stuff. He was going for four games. We had, they haven't even addressed. They are driving 143 miles an hour with a 12-year-old in the back seat. There are so many things that happen with these professional athletes. 
and they're only getting four games. How do you as an institution, when we're talking about dealing with kids who you don't pay, will not allow to get any kind of representation whatsoever to represent mm -hmm. them, yep. then turn around and punish them for an entire calendar year? I'm not refuting the fact that Will Greer was wrong. I'm not refuting the fact that he should not be punished. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is we have a bigger problem here than him taking some over-the-counter supplement or beyond mm -hmm. when the punishment implemented against him it's hard is yeah. significantly yeah. more severe than what transpires with grown men who are professional okay, athletes okay. with their livelihoods the fact, on okay, the line. That's fine. That's but, an but issue. You do have to appreciate the fact the NCAA just busted a high-profile quarterback at a team on the rise that had a chance to be a I playoff agree. team, right? I agree. They're We're showing still. you that we We're are still. policing yeah, our sport. Yeah, but it's still not right. It's excessive. Okay. Boy, it's, it's excessive. It's tough. But it's excessive. That's the message here. It's is, excessive. You better not. You take from kids, but you won't give. Mm. That's not right. It's All right, right, we'll leave that there. The Gators are at LSU this weekend. More first take after the break. The U.S. national team stays busy in a friendly against Costa Rica at Red Bull Arena in New Jersey. That is 6.55 Eastern on ESPN tonight. Guess what? I had to work my Cowboys into the show. Oh, good. Jerry Jones is a Libra, like yeah. someone else, okay. and he's 73 today. And Happy birthday, By the birthday, way, Jerry. someone else has a birthday tomorrow, oh. Stephen A. Smith. Yes. And by the way, do you realize Jerry was younger than you are when he bought the Cowboys? He was 46. But he hasn't won a Super Bowl in 20 oh, years. So, so with cool. this, Jerry, I will say this. Yeah. Happy birthday. Day to Boy, that was, you. That was, there, was there was a lot of bass in that. Yeah. <laughs> Bell seeking space. Bell trying to go over the top. He fights to the goal line. He's in for the touchdown at the gun. The Steelers win. With the second walk-off win in the history of Monday Night Football, the Steelers improved to three and two and trail the Bengals by two games in the AFC North. Stephen A, can your Steelers catch the Bengals? Skip Bayless, Molly, no, they cannot. Mm. I don't think my Steelers can catch uh, the Bengals because, you know, being two games back, I think they'll split with Cincinnati this, this year. I don't think they'll lose both games to Cincinnati, but I don't think they'll win both games. And then I think about the Steelers' hellacious schedule. I think their only shot is that they've got a three-game home stretch coming up after they play Arizona, I believe, where they've got Cincinnati, Oakland, and Cleveland yep. at home in Pittsburgh. They've got to win all of those games. But look at the rest of their schedule. I mean, we're talking about the bye week in week 11. Then you're at the Seahawks. You're home against the coach. You're at the Bengals. That's you're home half. against the Broncos. And then you close out the season at Baltimore and at Cleveland, which, by the way, are going to be two tough games. Yeah. I just think of that mindset when I compared that to Cincinnati's schedule. I'm just looking at it right now. I guess Buffalo will be tough this week. We'll see what happens. But obviously, Cleveland, Cincinnati can win that game. Yeah, Pittsburgh. Then you got Cleveland, Houston at home. Those are wins to me. You got a road game against Arizona, which is a toss-up. You're home against St. Louis. That's a win to me. You're on the road against Cleveland. That's a win to me. You're at home against Pittsburgh. If you lose at Pittsburgh, you'll beat Pittsburgh at home. You're on the road at San Francisco. I think that's a win. You may lose to Denver in Denver, mm -hmm. but then you got Baltimore on your home turf. I just find Cincinnati's schedule to be easier mm -hmm. combined with the fact that they already have a two-game advantage. And I expect Big Ben Roethlisberger, regardless of the reports as to how he might be ready next week, I expect Big Ben Roethlisberger to be gone for the next two weeks. Mm -hmm. That's just my expectation. I think him coming back a little bit earlier than that is a bit risque. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're going to take that risk with about eight to nine games left on the schedule once he returns. I don't think they're going to jeopardize that by bringing him back a week too early. So I look at it from that perspective, and I just don't see how the Steelers are going to be able to catch Cincy. If Cincy's schedule schedule was tougher hmm. that would be different but because i find their schedule to be easier than pittsburgh's and pittsburgh already being in a hole two games i think that i have to roll with cincinnati to hold on to this division and for the steelers to gather a wild card so is your gut that ben would miss the next two games 
Yes. Or or come back for the game at Kansas City. No. I think I think they'll be I think he'll be going for at least the next game, probably the next probably two. Probably two games. I say definitely the next game, probably the next two. Okay. If you're right about that, there is no way they're going to catch the Bengals. And this is no disrespect to Michael Vick, who had such a great close to that game last night. But I don't think they can teeter through the next two games with Michael Vick as the quarterback because he's going to hit and miss and hit and miss. I, I don't think they can beat Arizona with Michael Vick. I don't think they can win at Kansas City with Michael Vick. That's just me. I do think Ben could win those games. And from just watching Ben throw before the game last night, Again, they said he's never worn a knee brace before, but I will bet you if it were left up to Ben, which it probably will not be, but if it were left up to Ben watching him throw last night, I'll bet you he wants to play against Arizona. They're saying there's a, an outside chance he could play against Arizona. If he does, I think it would lift the whole team up to the point they could beat a very good Arizona team. It's his left team. leg injured, is it not? No, I'm not Try sure about that. I, I believe think it's it his is. left leg. Yep. Because when you're throwing right-handed, mm -hmm. you're using your left Well, either way... Leg. You, you, you're you using use, both of them, but yeah, but, but you're, you're really pushing off your right. You're really, you're really, well, if you're right-handed, you're actually using your left leg to fling that football. You're actually using your left leg, right. and so for me, when I look at it from that perspective, I think that that leg has to be healthier. It and is I think his it's left risky. leg. That's yeah. right. This is, me, this, yep. this is his left leg. So if you're throwing right-handed, but your plant you're leg you're, is, you're planting. Is, you're planting your left leg. Skip, no, you're throwing you're off your yeah. your right leg. No, you're not. It's your left. It's your so left. You, you throw off your front foot? Yeah, yeah. You're throwing off. You're using your left leg as leverage. When you're throwing right-handed, you're planting with your left leg. You know, no. that's what you're doing. But your drive leg is your right but leg, But I'm just right? saying that, okay. yeah. But I'm All saying right. you're, driving, you're, you're planting your left leg. Okay. That leg is very, very important. And I think to rush him back would be incredibly risky. So I don't I think they're going to do that. Just get hurt I again. see the Steelers, like I told you before, that, you know, Michael Vick was coming into these four games, Baltimore, mm -hmm. San Diego, Arizona, Kansas yep. City. I said that they would go two and two, and I still stand by that. I don't know which game yet, but I think Pittsburgh will win one of the next two games. With Michael Vick. With Michael Vick. One of the it. next two, not both. I do both. not see it. Not both. If Ben could come back and stay upright, obviously, I think they could go on a run here and win five in a row. Because as you point out, it's Arizona, Kansas City, and then those three, the yes. Bengals are not a winnable home game, but they are at home. Yes. So you, you could rip off five straight wins and get to eight and two. And at that point, listen, that, that game at Buffalo, if Buffalo ever gets its weapons back, and mm -hmm. I don't know what LaShawn's going to do, I don't know yeah. what Sammy Watkins is going to do, but they are still an incredibly dangerous team at home as it starts to get a little colder yeah, up there. I agree. Tyrod was sensational. Well, I can't worry about the Tennessee, cold. I can't worry about the cold weather because that's one thing Cincinnati should be. No, I, I, I'm with you. But but again, is that a tricky game? What, what if they lost that and then they lost to, to Ben at Pittsburgh? All of a sudden, it would be tied. It would, it would change everything. I just, I just go, don't right? see the Steelers making up two games without Big Ben being in the lineup earlier. I understand what you're saying, but basically where you and I differ is that I don't believe that Big Ben is going to be okay. rushed back. And, and as much as I respect Cincinnati, as much as I pick Cincinnati mm -hmm. to beat your Seahawks this past Sunday, I'm, I'm not saying they're invincible because defensively, they're they're tenth in points allowed. They're they're pretty good on defense, but they're not shut down on defense. They're they're actually twenty first in yards allowed. So my point is, I love all their weapons. Yep. I love their run game. I love their receiving core, obviously with AJ and, and Eifert. But but still, but can they, you bet on them in the postseason, well, the, Skip? But, but no, let's, I'm just confining <laughs> it to the rest of the regular season. Yeah. Can you bet on them to go what? 16 and 0? No. Yeah. Can you can you bet on them to go 14 and 2? No. You can't. They're going to lose it. They have to go but to Arizona bet, and go to but Denver. But can you bet on the Steelers going 13 and 3? No. I I see I, I don't see, see Cincinnati losing more than 3 game 3 games this year. Really? Boy. At, at Arizona at Denver the way Pittsburgh, that they're playing, I don't see them losing more than three games this year. Okay. I just want to see if they can get over the hump in the postseason. Well, that's what I'm saying. It means, that, it means nothing. I'll give them all the respect and the credit in the world for what I think they're going to do in the regular season because I think Cincinnati is 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 incredibly talented. What I don't believe, and I love to see my man Pac-Man Jones doing what he's doing, but I don't believe for one second I got to see Andy Dalton in the playoffs to believe it. I don't mm -hmm. care about this transformation. Everybody's talking about yep. how there's something different. There's something mm -hmm. different in his eyes. A huge jack. 
relaxed and has instilled a level of swag in him and all this. Yeah, that's all nice, good and dandy from September through December. Yep. Come to me come January about Andy Dalton. I'm and, not and interested in anything line, I see before and then. I think you agree with me. I thought the Seattle loss at Cincy was more about Seattle than it was about Cincinnati. I agree. Yep. Okay. That's fair. All right, moving on, we go back to college. Charlie Strong gets a big win, so is his hot seat cooling off? We'll discuss the Longhorns when we come back.